Let's take a look at some new sculpts from Blackheart Models. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Initiative Modeler. One of the things I wanted to do before the end of the year is to take another look at the Micromania line of busts from Blackheart Models, particularly the Star Trek collection. They've added some new sculpts to that line that are really cool to look at, so I'm excited to share those with you. And what I'd like to do is to look at them individually and then pick two of them to paint. Let's take a look. Well, let's first take a look at the new bust of Captain Kor. The sculpt has a pretty good likeness of John Calicos, who played Kor in the episode Aaron of Mercy. The sculpt has both great facial details, and his costume looks to be pretty accurate as well. Here's an interesting tidbit. Someone recently told me that Worf in Season 1 of Next Generation wears the same kind of sash as Kor wears here. I think this sculpt's gonna look great painted. Can't wait to get to him. Next up here we have the Andorian from the episode Journey to Babel. And again, we have a sculpt with incredible likeness to the character. I remember he had the saddest eyes and expression sometimes, and this bust captures that look for sure. Both the tunic and poncho he wears here look pretty good too. I should mention that the sculpt also comes with the two antenna. Next is Vina from The Cage. Here she is as the Orion Slave Girl. This bust is a little different in that it includes her right arm and hand as well, making the bust stand at six inches instead of the usual four. Sometimes it's hard to tell the likeness when unpainted. We'll have to see how she looks when completed. But again, a pretty nice sculpt. And here we have Balok as he appeared after revealing himself to the Enterprise crew at the end of the episode Corbomite Maneuver. The statue has a great resemblance of the young Clint Howard who played him. I definitely look forward to painting him too. And here we have a sculpt I've shown you in the past. Uh, I purchased this one at Wonderfest, so this was released earlier this year. This is the Telosian from The Cage. And this sculpt looks fantastic. Great resemblance to the actress Meg Wiley, and the details on the head, like the veins, look spot on. As a kid, whenever anyone mentioned the term alien, this is what I thought of. And lastly, we have another sculpt that I purchased earlier this year at Wonderfest. This is a poor injured Captain Pike. Great resemblance here to Sean Kenny, who played the disfigured captain, down to the details of how the makeup was applied. They've also included elements of his chair. You know, one of the things I can say is that I did not enjoy painting figures for the longest time. You know, when it came to painting figures, I would just slap some paint on them and just pretty much be done with it. But a number of years ago, my friend Mark Fraley got me into trying a figure. And as many of you who follow my channel probably know this already, that the McCoy figure I painted was the first one I'd ever tried. And I really did enjoy it. And since then, I've come to really like painting stuff like this. Now, the one thing about these types of projects is that it provides not only a nice break between model building projects, which as fun as those can be, it's nice to take a bit of a break and, uh, you know, hone in on some other skills. And uh, by doing so, you know, you learn to blend paints and learn different techniques to do so and know uh, what it's like to work more with shadows and highlights. And those skills are applicable to uh, figures of any scale. So I'd highly recommend trying one of these sculpts from Blackheart Models. Uh, not only are the uh, products that you're working with here of good quality, but the likeness of these characters is just amazing. Well, it's time to get started with painting, and I am looking forward to painting each of these. But for this video, I'm going to be choosing Captain Core and the Telosian to work on. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, the first step is always to prime the busts, and uh, these are resins, so you definitely can use Steiner Res as an option. Uh, I'm sure rattle cans work fine. Um, problem with rattle can primers, though, they can be kind of thick, so you have to be careful. You don't want to obscure any of the details. So uh, if you have an airbrush, Stino Res is okay. Uh, the only thing about Stino Res is it tends to be a bit on the dark side, and uh, the techniques I'm going to be showing you here are, are based on a lot of stuff I've learned from painter Joe Hudson, who I've made reference to before. By the way, he's coming out with a book in 2023, uh, so that'll be cool. Uh, but he likes to use, to me, a sky gray, which I ran out of, uh, so it's kind of a lighter gray color. So what I've used here is Vallejo's uh, light gray here for their model air collection. Well, ready to get started here with core, and um, I always like to get started with the clothes first. Um, I don't know, it just kind of gets me into what I need to do with blending and all of that. The face tends to be a bit more complex when you're um, uh, applying the highlights and blending all these different things. So the clothes now are made up of the mock turtleneck that he wears, which is black. We've got a tunic that covers that. It's a kind of a gold or shiny fabric. And then the shiniest piece that he wears is this sash. So uh, I think what I want to do here is get started with all of this. 
I will apply a gold color to the sash, and I'll see how that looks. I might airbrush a shinier gold over that, but I'm going to wait to do that to the very end. All right, let's go ahead and get started with Captain Core. So the tunic is black, but I never really use black actually as a base color. I started here with Prussian blue with some black added in to make it darker. And then for the highlights, I added in some neutral gray. And for the shadows, which are very hard to see on something like this, I just use black for that. All right, so for this tunic now, I'm gonna go ahead and use model color bronze as our base color. And I think to bring out these textures, it might be easiest just to put a, a dark or black wash over that. So let's go ahead and put on the bronze first and see where we go from there. Okay, well this is how the tunic turned out as well as the sash. And uh, I, I'm fast forwarding to this point uh, because I deviated from my original plan. So let me take a minute to show you and walk you through this. Now you can see here I proceeded with applying the bronze as I had mentioned and went forward with adding in some shadows, uh, adding a, a wash uh, to bring out some of the darker areas there, and then proceeded with adding some highlights by adding a little gold to the mixture. And I thought it was looking pretty good, so I ended up moving on to the sash. And uh, that was very simple. I just ended up mixing in Vallejo's gold with some brass, and uh, that turned out to be my base color. And then I made a brown wash using some craft paint, uh, just some burnt umber, and watered it down, added a little dishwashing liquid and used that as my wash. And that did a nice job for filling in all that texture. And it certainly toned down the luster of the uh, base color, so I had to bring that back. And what I did was I just took a brush and dipped it into that color and uh, just glided over the surface and gently brought back some of the luster there. Now, um, as often happens with these projects, you know, I'll go to bed and then I'll wake up with some fresh eyes and look at it. And I sometimes have a complete change of heart and mind of what I want to do with this because as I looked at the shirt, it looked like something on a bronze statue. So I decided to uh, change course here and pulled out some oils. Uh, I don't know what made me do that, but I just thought I could maybe tone everything down with a light mix of some oils. So I ended up using some uh, yellow ochre mixed in with some titanium buff and a tiny bit of burnt sienna and created a, a nice color that toned everything down. I just applied this with light glazes, as you can see here, and ended up darkening up some of the shadows there with some Van Dyke brown mixed in with all of this. And so this is how it all turned out. And I'm very pleased with, with the look of this now. We're getting a nice contrast between the tunic and that sash. And even though this is not as shiny as that cloth would have looked like in person, uh, I just think this looks better. Uh, I did want to add, by the way, that uh, as I was putting on those glazes, um, I was concerned that it was going to take a while to dry. And one thing that you can add to oil paints is this stuff called liquin. It's a medium that you use for speeding up the drying process. And because this was done in light glazes, it actually did not take long to dry. So once this was all done, I went ahead and sprayed on a gloss coat, which will be toned down with a dull coat at the very end. Now I might bring back some of the luster of this uh, tunic by maybe dry brushing on a tiny bit of gold. I'm not sure about that, but uh, I'll give that some thought and uh, we'll see what happens there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to his face now. So with Caucasian skin tones, uh, Joe taught me to start with beige red and mahogany brown. And uh, if you look at this picture from him on screen, you'll notice that uh, he had some darker tones applied to him. So I'm going to start off with that combination first and uh, definitely going to mix in more brown tones for this when it comes to adding in the highlights and the shadows. So I'm going to begin now with some beige red in here. And you can see that's a pretty light tone. I'm going to darken it up with some mahogany brown. This is a trick that he taught me. Just put a dab of this in the center, making like an eyeball, he calls it. So let's go ahead and mix it up, and I'm going to mix in some water as well. And after mixing it here, I think I'm going to go ahead and start mixing in a little bit of brown. And so I've got some ebony flesh here. I'm just going to put a very small drop of this to start with. 
just to give us a bit darker shade to work with here. And let's start painting. Now again, very light shades here. You can see this is going on very, very light. And that's what we want. This really is a nice technique to use, uh, as you saw with the Spider-Man. Did the same thing. And um, what's nice is you just add in these layers that are very thin. And you do not end up obscuring the detail nor do you get a lot of gooped up paint either. There's a lot of nooks and crannies with these types of figures and sculpts. And this helps to just make sure that you don't get a big accumulation of paint in some of these little corners. And it keeps the color consistent as well. And you'll notice I'm just gliding over the surface with my brush here. Really light strokes. And we're gonna cover his entire face with the first coat and we'll do that again. And I'll be adding about three coats or so, depending on how it's looking. So always impressed with how these dry so flat. Uh, but we have now our base color on. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and move on to the shadows. And uh, so to do that, we're going to take our base color now and add in some of this brown. And that is going to be applied into these folds around his eyes and uh, certainly underneath the chin and so forth. So we're going to make a second batch now, and what I like to do, as I've shown you in the past, is I always like to take these bottles and put them over the paint I'm not going to be using there so they don't dry out. And we're going to go ahead and move on, create some more of our base color. If you recall, we did an eyeball. And uh, let's go ahead and mix that up. And remember, we added a drop of this. Okay, so for this step, uh, we're going to get into now some wetlining. And we're going to have two brushes here at, at the ready. Uh, one is going to be for our darker tones, and the other one's going to be to blend it in with our base color. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start off with applying our darker shades here around the eyes first. So there's always a point along the way where the details start to look pretty harsh and that's because we only have the two shades on there. And so what I'm going to do now is start blending in some highlights and bringing it all together. So for the highlights we're going to add, we're going to take our base color and we're going to add just a little bit more of the beige red to line it up. Okay, well the face is about done here now, and um, I'm going to move on next to the hair and the beard. Now, one thing I did want to make note of, I didn't record this, but I just dipped uh, this old brush into some dark brown paint and just at a distance flicked a little paint towards his face, and the purpose of which was to get tiny little specks and dots on his face, um, just to try and make his skin look a little more realistic. Okay, as you can see, I got a lot done here. Not only did I fill in the beard, eyebrows, but also the hair and the eyes. I'm going to be doing a little more with the hair, adding some shadows and highlights, but let me talk about the eyes here. A lot of people have trouble doing eyes. I don't find them that difficult, although I've been in eye care for 30 years. So maybe I should know what eyes look like. This is my process. I start off first with uh, filling in the sclera. That's the white part, and I don't use a bright white. I end up mixing in a a light gray, a little bit of blue, because um, you just don't want them shining at you. And then I start work on the iris. So the iris, I start with a main circle of a dark brown in this case, because his eyes are brown. And um, then I come in with the color of the iris, which in this case is a lighter brown. And I try to leave a line around the uh, iris there, around the edge of the iris, because that's called the limbus and eyes generally have a dark color around the edge. And I'm trying to leave as much of that 
intact as I can. Uh, then, as you can see here, I come in with a toothpick painting in the pupil. Uh, and that's just the black that I use for that. And what I have found for painting in the, the last two things that I add in, one is the cornea reflex. And anytime you see an eye, whether that's in a picture or you're talking to someone, there's generally light reflecting off the cornea. And then the other thing is I add in a little pink at the corner, uh, which we call that the canthus. And um, so to add in those two, I have found this tool here, which I found at Harbor Freight. It looks like a dentist tool. It has a very fine tip here. And I just dip that into the white for the cornea reflex. And as you can see here, I'm adding in that dot just ever so gently. And I do the same thing in the corner with the canthus there. That's just a very light shade of pink that I add in at the corner. And the final step, uh, once this is all done, is to add in a gloss coat over the eyes. All right, so I'm going to get started now with finishing up the hair, adding in the shadows and highlights, and I'll show you the completed busts of Core at the final reveal. Okay, well now that Core is completed, I definitely look forward to sharing him with you in the final reveal. It all turned out great. I'm ready to get started here now with the Telosian. So with this one, I'm not going to give as a detail a description. In fact, I'm just going to kind of abbreviate this. Uh, the order in which I do this is going to be the same. I'm going to start off with the clothing, which is not as complicated as that of Core. And uh, so we're going to get that painted and the piece that she wears around her neck, and then move on to the face and the head. All right, let's go ahead and begin. So now that this is complete, I'm ready to move on to the face and the head. All right, so ready to apply the base color. And as you've seen, I now have colored in these veins here with purple. And the purpose for doing that is both in the uh, reference pictures I'm looking at, as well as the TV show, uh, you could see the veins kind of come through the character's skin. So I'm hoping it'll replicate the look. Uh, what I've got going on for the base color now is uh, this beige red. If you look at this reference photo here, you can see the complexion of the character is pale, so I don't think we need to go any darker than that as the base color. For the highlights, we're going to be using this basic skin tone. Both of these are from Model Color. And for the shadows, I'll be using this rosy shadow here from MSP. By the way, these Master Series paints I purchased at a store in San Diego that sells a lot of the figures for um, board games. Uh, people do enjoy painting those and, and customizing them. So uh, that's a good source for figure paints if you happen to have a gaming store near you. Now, even though you are applying these in even strokes, um, sometimes you will get a little accumulation of paint like this, and you want to address those as quickly as possible. If you see that they're starting to dry, just leave it alone because um, if they're too dry, but not dry enough, um, and you brush over them, you will end up causing a surface defect, so you just want to avoid that. Well, this is now the base color, and uh, yeah, you know, as I'm comparing it to the reference photo, you can see this is what I'm using here. Uh, in the end, we'll have to be a bit paler than this, so um, I'm going to proceed with applying the shadows and highlights as planned. But I think once we're done, I'm going to actually put a light misting of this Virgin Flesh. It's a semi-transparent paint from garagekits.us. I think this would be a good 
uh, way to finish off this particular figure here. Well, after a lot of uh, tweaking here and there, I um, finally got to the point where I'm happy with this. Uh, this was not the best choice. Uh, I'm not sure if I just need more practice uh, with these colors or this particular paint, but it didn't look right to me, so I had to repaint a lot of this. And uh, after a lot of time spent brushing and rebrushing, I think I finally got to the point where I'm happy with it. So I did apply a gloss coat just to set everything in place, and um, I'm happy to say that some of that purple that I applied here, as well as I uh, put a little bit of Tamiya kit on some of these veins here, uh, did kind of come through. I'm going to enhance that just a little bit further, which is one reason I put the gloss coat on. So that way if I want to take away some of it, it'll be easy just to rub off. And then once that's set in place, I'll put another coating to protect it, and then we'll work on the eyes. And following the same technique I did with Core, I'm going to go ahead and finish up these eyes and show you the completed bust in just a second. All right, so here's first a reminder of how the sculpt looked before, and here is how it looks after it's been painted. Although we could see the resemblance of the actor prior to painting, it really comes through now. The color mix has worked well to mimic the look of the makeup used on a TV show, and I'm really pleased with the final tones and shades that I ended up with. The base color, which consisted of beige red and mahogany brown, served as a nice starting point. To create the shadows, I ended up adding to that mix ebony brown, and to create the highlights, I simply added more beige red to the base color. As you can see, I added some shadows and highlights to the hair as well. The base color for the hair was burnt umber combined with some black. I used plain black for the shadows along the hairline and bottom edges around the head, and used burnt umber alone for most of the lighter areas. I did add just a little khaki for the highest peaks and points. As for the clothes, if you recall I started with Vallejo's bronze, but ended up changing my mind since it looked way too metallic. I ended up adding in some oil paints made of yellow ochre and titanium buff, and it worked well to tone everything down. My recommendation if you don't want to mess with oils is to use some sort of tan as the base color, then apply a dark brown wash to bring out the striping. And by the way, I did return to the tunic later to see what I could do to bring back the luster lost by applying those oils. I chose to use a color called Old Gold by Vallejo, which ended up being a good choice. The paint was dry brushed onto the piece and edges, and worked nicely to mimic the look of the sparkly cloth used for the tunic on the show. Overall, I have to say I'm very pleased with him, and it was a lot of fun working with it. And just for fun, I thought I'd include a few shots of him next to the one and only James T. Kirk. And here we now have the keeper from the cage, and I am also very pleased with the way she turned out. Again, real good likeness before, but certainly can see it when it's painted. The tunic was a combination of metallic colors, and the nice texture of the piece lends itself well to using dry brushing techniques for applying the highlights. The base color was Vallejo's light gray, mixed with a drop of purple, I chose to add in the purple to give it a little more color and to try to replicate the look of the lighting on those tunics that we saw on screen. After fully painting the tunic with the base color, it was followed by a mix of steel and silver which was dry brushed over the entire tunic. The shadows were created by adding gunmetal to the mix and then pure silver for the highlights. As you saw, the base color for the face and head was beige red and this was darkened with a little rosy shadows from MSP for the shadows. I lightened the base color with Vallejo's basic flesh for the highlights. As an added touch, I pre-shaded the veins with purple, then enhanced with a light gray blue from a Tamiya weathering kit. The blue was also lightly brushed around areas between the veins to give these entire sections a bluish tone. When all said and done, you end up with a very nice replica of the Keeper. And I thought I'd throw in as an added bonus here some better pictures of the Ruck bus which I completed prior to OrangeCon last month. It's a really nice sculpt of the character played by Ted Cassidy. The challenge was the makeup, and I did try my best to duplicate the look. This was done with various shades of blue and purple, and to help blend in those effects, I not only did a light misting of the base color, 
but also used a makeup applicator and some purple pastels along the edges. I actually started with the beige red, mahogany brown, and flesh tones for the face and head, and then used light grays over it to create the bluish gray hue. I approached it like I was applying the actual makeup over a face. You can see a little of the flesh tones peek through in the highlights, as was seen in the reference pictures I came across. When completed, you end up with a very convincing replica of the famous character. And here he is with Captain Kirk. Alright, well just a few closing comments here, uh, and just bear with me, the uh, dryer's going on in the background, so there's a little noise there. Um, what I want to make mention of, first of all, are reference photos. You hear me talk about reference photos throughout the video. The way that I get my reference photos is I just go online and do a little research about the episode and the character. And I just try to find the best lit um, shots that I can of the character to screenshot. And I just load a bunch of them on my laptop so that I have something to, to look to as I am painting. Uh, the other thing I do, too, is I rewatch the episodes. Uh, I love Star Trek, so it's another opportunity to, to watch the episode again. But uh, by doing so, it also might inspire me because as I look at the character on screen, it might give me more ideas on painting and, and applying the shadows and highlights and what direction I want to go. So it's a fun way to not only uh, enjoy the episodes again, but to gather more information about the character that you're working on. And blackheartmodels.com is where you can find these uh, busts again. Uh, they're a micromania collection there. Uh, they, I count now about 17 uh, different busts now in the track collection, including Gene Rodmary. So if you want to add him to your collection, there's one available of him as well. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed following along. I know painting videos are not the most exciting things to watch, but I hope you learned and gained something from this. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at inashodermodeler at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you then in the next one. Take care.